Hey guys and welcome. For today's project we have the Halo Pelican as you can see here from Ravel. Now I got this at a really good deal for $9.99 from Hobby Lobby marked down from $39.99 so good price on that. This is uh, one of the you know, snap tight build and play type kits so uh, but I think there's a lot we can do with it. Uh, I've looked at some other projects of the Pelican there is uh, on Facebook there is a page run by a guy named Dave called Daviant's Model Madness and he's redid one, repainted it, he's customized it, um, it actually has like rotors and stuff like that on the tips of the wings really nice job done on that I'm not doing anything like that I don't plan on doing anything major as far as the redesign of the body but I am uh, going to do a full repaint on it uh, not quite sure uh, I'm thinking of some kind of camouflage pattern possibly maybe getting some decals uh, some different decals to put on it just something like that to bring it up and show you what you can do with this um, now here is the body again this is the build and play it's really thick it's basically a kind of a toy that's not been put together yet uh, as a small, I was messing around with it a little bit. Um, it does have an interior that's somewhat detailed. I don't know how much work we're going to put into that. Uh, it comes with a variety of parts right here. You can see all the different kind of parts and whatnot. And uh, pretty straightforward. It does come with a couple of pilots. It does have a light and sound module that um, hooks in here, and I believe it lights. Uh, a little light in the cockpit and some running lights of some sort on the sides and there's some various sounds it makes. So uh, that's what we're starting off with. I uh, just want to turn it into a nice project. We'll clean up some of the seam lines, stuff of that nature, and give it a good paint job and see how we make it look. Uh, I think we can turn it into something nice. I've seen some other people do really nice things with theirs. So. Uh, for the price, can't beat it. It's a nice size model. I'm not sure of the scale. I'll have to try to look and see if I can find some kind of scale of that. I think looking at the pallets, um, maybe something like a 1-100 scale, maybe something in there. Anyway, I'll try to research and see if I can find anything else on that. So let's uh, just get started with it. Alright, so we started on some of our little detail work uh, with all the engine nozzles and the different intakes. I've primed them and then I've actually put in some black in the inside parts of the intakes and on the inside parts of the engine nozzles. And the plan is to paint these in like a steel color, or some kind of chrome, something that finished the engine nozzles. And then with the different intakes, a darker color, possibly a gunmetal or dark gray or something of that nature. Uh, so we'll add two different colors on the uh, different uh, parts of the ship. We've uh, put a primer coat over the cockpit section and I didn't, I'm going to leave it that color. I've put a clear um, semi-gloss on it and we're going to do some deep, we're going to do some detailed painting and then maybe a wash to add some detail in there. Uh, we started work on our pilots here. We primed over them and then we've gone over and did like a uh, dark green or olive green uh, base coat on them and this is drying so once this dries uh, we'll put in a uh, we'll color possibly the visor and put in maybe a wash just to bring out some of the detail on this guy. It's hard, it's hard to get this all guy in focus. So we're working on that. So that's the plans on there. Uh, for the insides of the ship, I've started some painting and I primed over the course and I put some like dark red or blood red for the seats and then I have some copper color that I did and I did some intentional contrasting colors because this is going to be closed up and you're not really going to be able to see a lot it's not lit inside so I wanted some contrasting colors to be able when you do look out hopefully you'll be able to make out the seats and some of the details now I'm still planning on doing a wash inside here some dry brushing and then one other thing I want to add some detail I've made this little cargo net and I want to put it somewhere in here. It's, uh, I'll have to trim it up a little bit more. And that'll give us a little bit of a 3D effect. And the way I've made this, and I got this from Interstellar Muller, and I think he got it from someone else, is you take some masking tape, uh, fold it over so you, it's stuck, it sticks to itself so you don't have any sticky sides. And then just trim over, get you a straight edge and a sharp X-Acto knife. And then just cut out strips. 
like this and then you can just super glue them together and what I do is I take my super glue, I have a little metal plate, an old license plate I put a little bit of the super glue on there and then I take a toothpick and just dab the glue in the spots they want and then lay the part over so that makes for a uh, pretty cool little effect, you can do it for seat belts uh, anything of that kind of nature, nature. but I think it'll be, you'll be able to, you should be able to see it, I may do two, I'm undecided uh, I just kind of eyeballed it. Uh, I didn't really measure it out. Just kind of eyeballed it. It's fairly small. Um, uh, I think that uh, added a nice little detail of something you can see, give it a little bit of a 3D effect. So that's what we have going on with that. We haven't really started on the body uh, with the wing section. Uh, I have these uh, missile pods and different things. This came off a Star Blazers, one of the Cosmos Zero kits. It had a bunch of extra weapons, uh, quite a few left over. So uh, you do have these hard points on the wings, but it doesn't give you any weapons to attach. So we'll have some weapons and we'll just uh, glue them directly onto the hard points. And I have uh, a few different types and this may change as this is just generally, I know I want to put something on these hard points. I think that'll be a nice effect and give it a, some nice detail. And I have ordered some uh, decals. Um, to put on here we're going to get away from the whole halo theme and it'll be kind of a USA kind of theme the camo pattern what I'm leaning toward is a two color camo pattern right now uh, that's kind of a gray and dark green I've seen it on many military jets it's simple but looks cool and I think it'll you know complement this model nicely that could change as we go and as I start painting it if it's not working well obviously we won't do it or if I Beside on a single color, but that's what I'm kind of leaning toward. I've been looking at there, a couple different patterns. So there we are, and uh, things are coming together, and I think it's going to look good when we get done. Okay, so as you can see, I'm now gluing the model. Now, this is a snap type model, so it's not required to glue, but I'm trying to get a good fit along this uh, seam line right here. Uh, so it'll be glued. So I am going to come back and put some putty in here and sand it down, make this uh, smooth, and eliminate that seam line on both sides. That's, so that's why I am gluing it. Now I do have this right here. I'm probably going to leave this. It looks more like a natural panel line. There's not a lot going on here. Otherwise I don't think we gain a lot by removing that line. I may clean it up a little bit on this edge right here. Uh, so I'm just gluing it in. My uh, interior is done and uh, in place. I have the cockpit painted up with the pilots painted up. Um, I can still make it some touch-up painting if I decide to go that route on there. I've placed in a little red decal to kind of give it a little bit of a cockpit screen. There was nothing there. It doesn't give me anything to put in there. So you have to... Uh, the cockpit area is kind of weak, so I'm just doing the best I can with what it gave me without doing any major alterations. Uh, it's going to be covered over with a canopy, so it won't be too noticeable. It does light up when you push this front button. So we'll have the light going on. So we're letting that dry, letting the cockpit dry, and what I'm doing now is the air intake sections. I'm going to paint them with a gunmetal color, and I've already set up my airbrush, and we're just going to give these a shot of paint. Alright, so there we go, and remember we painted the, the actual intake part black earlier, and we put some gunmetal on that, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to do this section. It's like a two-part section that goes on both sides of one of the uh, engines, I believe. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, it's going to be dulled down. Where we'll be putting a, a matte varnish once we get all of it painted. So it's not going to be shiny. It'll be dulled down, and we'll act, add some uh, weathering to it once we finish. But I, I like the color. So that's the plan for the rest of these intake sections. And for the actual engine nozzles, we're going to do more of a steel or metal silver kind of color. And we'll get that done. So it'll be a little bit of difference between the intakes and then the nozzles. So I'm going to finish these up, and then I'll be right back. All right, I've uh, been addressing the uh, seams that were in the side of the body, and I've just used this uh, Bondo glazing putty. Put it on there. It didn't take long. I think it only took about an hour or so to dry. And then just took some sanding paper, some different grits, and then sanded it up, cleaned it up. And I think we got that pretty well. Now I'm going to mask off the uh, cockpit area, and then we're going to put a primer coat, and that'll help kind of expose if we need to. Do some more sanding or add some more putty that'll be a time that we will expose that there's a little bit of a seam right here but i think it's going to be mostly covered uh, with these engine sections so i'm not too worried about that but i think the um, noticeable gap that ran along the sides here i think we've got that pretty well covered but again once we uh, put a primer coat it'll become a lot more noticeable Okay, so I've added this first layer of primer, and that helps bring out any flaws that we need to address. And overall, it's pretty good. Uh, just a little bit right here, I had a little bit of the putty just kind of showing through. Not showing through, but you could tell where I didn't quite sand it smooth. So we sanded that, and what I've decided to do in this one line, it was just kind of a gaping line here, uh, seam line. And I've taken a little, this is some styrene, some I-beam styrene, and it's fairly flexible and I just started super gluing it into place and wrapping around to conceal that seam line right there and at the same time it adds a little bit of detail to our model. This model uh, doesn't have a lot of lines or uh, things of that nature as far as panel lines or anything and we did have this bad seam line, I'm sorry. And so we've addressed that and this, uh, like I said, we just put some super glue and I did it in sections. It's one piece but I put a little super glue got that on there to where it was uh, good and dry and then did the curved part with a little bit more super glue and then finally did the uh, uh, rest of it to hide that, um, that big open area. So uh, I think it's, um, I think it looks good. I think it'll give a little bit of detail. Now we're going to put another coat of primer and we should be able to start working into the paint. Okay, I've added a layer of paint on the uh, model and what I went with is uh, Vallejo's uh, medium gray from their Mecca color collection and I've painted pretty much all the different parts and what I've decided to do as far as the paint scheme of the model is I want to do a two color uh, camouflage pattern. I've looked at a lot of uh, uh, pictures and stuff of various military jets all around the world. A very common one I saw was this kind of gray and uh, got all the green camo pattern. Really simple, but still at the same time look cool. So just a two color camouflage pattern. We'll kind of break it up in sections. Uh, what I'm thinking is I probably am going to assemble the model. That way my camouflage pattern will flow across the body and wings and there won't be kind of like a break in the line or something of that nature. Because when I looked at the different Pictures and that's pretty much what I saw that you know the jet or would be assembled and you know They would paint it all in one scheme. So I'm, I'm going to assemble it and then we'll mask off as you can see right here uh, With this wing which also has some of the engines. I've assembled it. We've added in our intake section and our engines And I think that looks good. I think once we get some camouflage and weathering that um, That should look nice. I've also uh, I've ordered this I got this off of eBay. This is a uh, some decals from a F-16. I won't be using all of them, obviously. They look kind of old. Some of them are a little bit more yellow than I, they looked in the picture when I bought it. Um, I don't know if I'll use those. Uh, but a lot of these I think will look nice. They have some nice, nice uh, like wolf head uh, decals, which I think would be nice on somewhere on the front of the uh, jet. And we have some subdued, you know, USA emblems here and some different things that we can use throughout the model. Uh, I got this for probably four or five dollars, so um, not a bad price on that. And this is from a 148 scale F-16A Fighting Falcon from 
uh, Hasegawa, if you know how the kits, I guess. Uh, but if you look around, you can find different uh, decal sets. So I think uh, I'll bring out, we'll have a lot of little emblems and different things that we put on there. And that'll help with the detail of the model. So I'm going to get it assembled and I'm going to start masking off uh, for a camouflage pattern. Alright, you can see that I now uh, have painted it with the green. And what I did is I dismasked off a lot of these sections and I painted it over with an olive green. To me it's olive green. I wasn't happy when it was done with the hard lines that it left. Uh, I kind of looked over some pictures and some pictures it showed some hard lines. Some it was more kind of faded into the paint. And so what I decided to do was just take my airbrush and just freehand kind of go back over and kind of extend out a little bit some of the areas where um, it wasn't, I wasn't really happy with the pattern itself and also just kind of blended in, faded in the green into uh, the gray. So I've done that and I've also added on a, a semi-gloss. That's why I have a bit of a shine on it right at the moment. That's okay. We're about to put decals on it now. So we need that to help the uh, decals um, you know, move around easily on the model. So we're going to put decals on it and we'll clear coat it after that and then we'll uh, start weathering it. So it, it looks, you know, it's, hard, it's still hard to envision right now in this process. This is where, you know, it's kind of iffy, but usually it comes together once you start putting the weathering and uh, putting the dull coat over it to bring down that shine. Alright, I put on some uh, just various decals, uh, not too crazy, just something to kind of give it a little extra detail, uh, a little extra personality. And I, since I, I put it on, I also put some uh, Microsol decal solution on it to kind of help the decals blend in with the model itself. And then I put on a semi or a satin coat, uh, clear coat on top of the decals to protect them because we're moving into the weathering and I'm going to start off with a type of wash that I often use just using some liquid shoe polish we brush it on uh, take it off with uh, cloth and water uh, or you know uh, the excess off and we'll leave it in the recesses so I'm going to work on that I've done on many models so I'm not going to really show too much here and I'm going to do that but we're going to do that'll be the first layer uh, we'll get into some dry brushing and also we'll use some dry pastels and some Tamiya weathering kits to uh, give it the uh, some more detailed weathering looks around certain parts of the model like the engine nozzles and things of that nature. So I'm going to get working on that and we'll come back after that. Alright, so here we are with our finished Revell's Halo Pelican. And of course we did our own custom camouflage paint job on it. We added a few little details here and there. Uh, added some uh, weapons to the hard points of the wings. And uh, weathered it and got it all finished up. Right now it's just kind of sitting on this uh, little base that I painted with some uh, textured paint. So something simple for right now. Maybe in the future we can do something more to display it with it. But this is something we can set on. I'll be displaying it in like a landing formation with the ramp down so you can see inside. Now, I did do a little bit of added detail, um, such as the cargo net right there, and painting the inside. Uh, the upper part here is a strip of styrene that I added with a couple of uh, greeblies just to give some detail in there. But it's really hard to see in there. It's not lit, so uh, probably would have been a good idea to try to put a light in there. I just wouldn't want to put that kind of effort into this model. Uh, but let's just talk a little bit how we finished it up. Uh, we uh, once we got all the decals and everything situated, we put a clear um, satin coat over it, and then we went with a type of wash. Now, I've used this many times with some of my other projects. Uh, this is this liquid shoe polish, and all I do is brush it on with a paintbrush. I put some onto a uh, plate or something, some kind of container, and take a regular paintbrush and just paint it on and let it dry for a little bit to... Uh, make sure that it's uh, drying inside the uh, seam lines and the different areas that I want it to, to be at. And then I just take a uh, cloth, a damp cloth with just water, and remove the excess. And you can remove as much as you want, or, or as little as you want. You can always go back over it. You have, uh, it uh, works very well, it dissolves easy, and it's, it's a really inexpensive way to weather your models. Um, but it has a nice effect. It, it works as well as some of the other products I've seen that you pay a lot more. 
But that was the first, was just a wash, and that got into, like I said, a lot of these seam lines and crevices that we want to darken up. Um, it also kind of dirties the paint up a little bit. Um, when I wipe it off, I don't try to go all the way clean because I do want it to have kind of the very light uh, lines coming back, uh, like it's been weathered and actually been used. And then from there we went on and I used uh, some dry pastels. Now these are very inexpensive. Uh, I've had this for a couple of years and as you can see I still have a lot left. And kind of, You can get them uh, in these different shades of grays and blacks. We also have these colors here. I use these to do um, uh, like rust effects on different models. Um, these not so much but I do have these color ones in case I Want to do something in a more colored and all I do is I attach some sandpaper to a little piece of wood and you can see where I kind of uh, just scratch it off into remove this into a fine powder and then I take a very small um, paintbrush and well it can you can use larger ones uh, and just go around and do the uh, edges of the model where I want a little bit more detail such as these like uh, the vents in here where I want to bring out and have a little bit more defined and of course I can go heavier and then kind of brush it out light to have that faded look. Right here you see where we kind of have um, a mark coming off the wing like it's uh, building up on this particular area and that's just taking the brush with the dry pastels and, and brushing it back and kind of releasing pressure as you brush it back. But we did that in se several areas and then of course you can see some dry brushing with some silver. We took some silver paint and dry brushing where you just take the brush and put paint and then dry most of it off on um, a towel or something and then just lightly start running it over and catching the edges and that gives us like the paints weathering away. So if I can get that in the focus for you. And we did that all throughout the uh, model uh, on the leading edges. And once we got all that done we did a clear matte varnish coat using uh, this uh, Vallejo's matte varnish. And that is to tone it all down and get it, uh, get rid of all the shine, and that's really kind of starts bringing it out. Uh, so overall, we're really happy. The de decals worked out really well. The Microsol did a good job of, of getting them dissolved into the model, or at least the edges. It's really hard to make out the edges of the decals. You can a little bit on these, especially on these bigger ones, but some of these small ones, it's really hard to tell that they're decals. They almost look painted on. And so that's what the Microsol can do for you. It's real, if you're going to be putting decals, uh, uh, at least get the Microsol. Uh, I do Microset is helps get the the uh, decal into place. But it's the Microsol that really helps set it into the model and gets rid of the uh, decal lines and makes it look like it's painted on. So we did all that and. Uh, just really happy with the project. Again, it's, it is scale, was a 1 one hundred scale. And uh, these are probably uh, getting a little bit harder to find. I got this one really cheap, but uh, they're starting to get harder to find. But it was a fun project. Uh, there's several guys who do their own versions uh, with the paint and different type of modifications to it. It really lends itself to being modified. Of course, you can add weapons on it such as I did, such as um, just uh, adding some missile. It does have these hard points, so all I did was super glue these onto the hard points. Uh, really easy stuff. And just a little just back here, and there's no modifications to this back part. This is all just the way the model comes. And it's just a matter of getting it painted up. So once you get it painted up, it makes for a really nice model and display, especially if you're a fan of Halo and you and you want to have this in your collection. The uh, Landing gear closes, the bay door opens and closes, the landing gear up here kind of pushes up and locks into place. Uh, that is a little bit of a greebly I added to cover up. Uh, there was a space for the the speaker, or you can see the speaker, I didn't want that showing so much. You can still get to the screw if you do need to remove it and change out batteries. And it does have lights and sounds. Now these would light up more, but I've painted over, I'm not too worried about those lighting up, but they would light up. I just have to paint it over where uh, it actually goes into the model. Anyway, I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Please uh, give it a like and subscribe if you do. And until next time, we'll see you later.